we really got to make an effort to include more of variety. And so I often challenge people to try to get in at least 30 different plant-based foods a week, which may sound like a lot, but when you add it up, it's actually quite easy. The main thing that's gonna help to influence our gut microbiota is fiber. And fiber is found in a variety of different foods, including our fruits and vegetables, our whole grains, our nuts and seeds. And so we want to incorporate those in at each and every meal. Things like oatmeal, quinoa, whole grain pasta, brown rice are a great way to incorporate in more fiber, as well at least half of your plate of vegetables at lunch and supper every day. Another interesting aspect is starting to include fermented foods in the diet. A lot of fermented foods offer additional health benefits, uh, like fiber when we include things like fermented cabbage or sauerkraut, or when we include fermented products like yogurt and kefir, we're getting protein and calcium. Symbiotics are a combination of probiotic and prebiotic together. So probiotics are those live bacteria when offered at a specific amount and for a benefit to the host. And then prebiotics are kind of like the food for the probiotics. And the argument is, is that if you administer a probiotic and it doesn't have any fuel sources, it doesn't have those prebiotics, it may not be as effective. Some bananas have a certain amount of resistant starch in them, which have prebiotic-like effects in the gut. And then yogurt is a fermented food and some qualify as probiotics. So having them together, it could very realistically have that symbiotic effect in the gut. And it's really about getting back to basics. Nutrition, sleep, stress, movement, all of those important things we think of as being helpful for our health also help us by way of the gut microbiota.